Welcome to this sacred life in the divine feminine spotlight. I'm Shan Vanderleek, founder of TransformationGoddess.com. Every month I share transformational conversations with women who've learned to walk in beauty with the strength, courage, and pleasure of reclaiming their feminine sovereignty. Women all over the world are rising up to have their voices heard. And I like to give some of their voices a platform to speak their truth. And I invite you to do the same. Today's episode of This Sacred Life is brought to you by the Crystal Shaman School, a sanctuary where women rise into their soul wisdom through shamanic practices and crystal rituals. Visit crystalshamanschool.com and begin with the free seven-day crystal immersion journey. Today, it's my honor to introduce you to Lori Andrus. And actually, you might already know Lori. She's been a speaker for the Goddess Talk Sessions and a sponsor of the Goddess Talk Sessions over the last few years. Lori is the founder of the Crystal Shaman School, a practitioner of crystal shamanism, and a soulful traveler. She artfully blends ancient wisdom traditions with crystal insight to create practical and breakthrough lifestyle applications, supporting individuals in recreating their life. This goddess shines. Welcome, Lori. Mm, thank you, Shan. Oh, oh, it's so good to be here. It's lovely to speak with you again. I've been following your work now for, I don't know, it's been at least, it's got to be five or six years, maybe, maybe even longer. And so it's been my pleasure to watch your creations unfold and to have you back to have a conversation about what's next and what's going on. And let's begin with a little conversation and story about how you choreograph your sacred life, because you are a master at this from the outside looking in. Mm. You have, yeah, you have such a, such a wonderful world that you've created for yourself. (laughs) Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Oh, you know, I, well, first I need to just say, I love the sacred life. That phrase, it's just so beautiful. It just, I feel like it, it's such an anchoring, grounding phrase. And, you know, that's to me, like just beginning, hearing uh, the question of how do I choreograph my sacred life? The, the first answer that really comes forward is an acknowledgement that it is a sacred life, that every part of life is sacred. And beginning with that at, at the very foundation. As you know, Shan, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a creative person. I, I love to create. It's the part of myself that wants to be expressed, you know, through everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so that can be as simple as like recreating my space, recreating my yard, getting out in nature and recreating even in nature through ceremony and stuff like that. But really, you know, that that piece of um, finding how how does my soul want to be expressed and then allowing that the space for that. So it's like there's almost this piece of like giving myself permission to choreograph my own life. And, And being the creative spirit that I am, that piece is not something that's always recognized in in the world. Like it's not a traditional way of being, right? It's not structured from the linear place. It's taken me a while to just come into the place of being okay, like being okay with that, like being okay with not having a a day-to-day schedule that's really defined, but also there's, so there's that, this like creative dance that happens, right? Between able to uh, get things done, right? And, sure, and, sure. and, you know, be in a uh, normal life <laughs> pattern. <laughs> um, but then to also, you know, just be able to step back and allow the creative energy to flow. You know, I think when you had asked this question in kind of the pre-interview uh, reflections, I, as I was going through, the thing that just really jumped out for me was the, how one of the biggest shifts that's happened since Crystal Shaman School has has opened and you know the first the first group of students has gone through it's it's created a really interesting container it's given me space to flow with the seasons like each uh direction of the medicine wheel is is following the seasons so there's like this seasonal thing that's happening and there's also 
a period of time where I'm, I'm on, I'm like, you know, on, I'm teaching, I'm consistently active within the group, but then we have a windows where we're integrating. And for me personally, that that's created the space for me to be, to let my mind wander and let my mind be relaxed and let my mind go into those creative places that it, it needs to go so that when I, when it's time to show up and be on time and <laughs> be ready, I'm able to do that. It's like I, I need to, to balance both places in order to, to show up in the structure. I completely understand that. It's the same for me. I'm constantly talking about gratitude for spaciousness <laughs> because without it, I can't choreograph my sacred life because it becomes too constricted. It's like, okay, spread it all out, take a look and and let myself flow as much as I possibly can while chopping wood, carrying water, right? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) We're still taking care of our day to day. We're still doing all of the things that, that we're responsible for, but we're also allowing ourselves to, to flow and to have the ability to respond versus feeling so cornered by that linear calendar. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, um, you know, one of the things I find is that, you know, I I tend to have a certain time in the morning, like I don't like to begin my, um, begin my day before a certain window, like there's like, okay, after 10 o'clock, then I'm ready to go. But before that, I it's like the morning is for me, you know, it might be meditation. It might be yoga. It might be, I go out for a walk. It might be that I step into the garden and do a ceremony. For me, it's that space where I'm able to like, just really ground and connect in with myself, connect in with the energy of the day, connect in with, you know, what are the things that the chop wood, (laughs) carry water, (laughs) things that need to be done and, um, and just be really ready for them. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And let's dive a little deeper and, and talk about how you embody your feminine sovereignty. Mm. Yeah. Um, and again, this comes back to uh, that permission word. And um, I think for myself, giving myself permission has been a big part of my journey. Uh, the permission to to really embrace, you know, self, embrace the things that I love and enjoy in life and permission to express that in life. A part of doing, a, a part of expressing, you know, sovereignty as, as a creative spirit is, is that piece of permission. Like there's a, this natural desire to want to express, but being able to do that is, is knowing and trusting that we're going to be, we're going to be safe in doing it. We're, it's the right, you know, it's the right thing or aligned for us to do. That for me has been one beautiful journey. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and as you practice that, you open up so many doors for Mm -hmm. the people that you play with, for your students to do the same, Mm -hmm. really, to really, and that's, people around us see how we behave to, you know, the people who love us the most, the the people who, uh, that we, that we work with and that we're really honest with. And even that persona that we have in social media. Um, (laughs) And I, and I say that, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) when, when I see your sharing, for instance, when you're going camping or, when you're out and about and doing your travels and enjoying writing and taking your crystals along for the ride and all of these <laughs> things like that is so truly you claiming your freedom and showing up. And there's, it's just like, okay, well, this is, this is who I am. This mm-hmm. is what makes me tick. This is what brings me joy. And I'm going to share a little bit of it with you, but it's just kind of a snapshot. And then you're on doing your thing. That's, you know, again, that's me. Yeah, yeah. That's me telling you what I, what I see. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you know what's going on. But it's, been, it's just been very obvious to me that, that you've really blossomed into that place of, okay, this is, this is what I want my life to look like. And I'm, and I am claiming it. And that permission piece makes a whole lot of sense because 
there was a, a point where I think you were following the rules, air quote, mm -hmm. to agree that, you know, that you could to get to where you wanted to go next, to learn this next piece or whatever. And then it yeah. seemed like you just kind of blew all that up. So <laughs> this is what this really looks like. You're like, thank you for this outline, right? Uh -huh. Thank uh -huh. you for this piece. But now I'm good. Like, is that, is that, that like, that's resonating? pretty accurate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, it's so funny because I'm listening to it and I'm like, yeah, oh my goodness, you just nailed it. Yeah, it, I, I really do. I feel like I followed the rules. You know, I learned what I needed to learn. And and at the same time, you know, this is going to sound silly and it's probably going to sound woo-woo. And so for those of you who aren't, you know, fully into hearing me, <laughs> me talk about the crystals telling me what to do, but uh, the crystals really were, they were kind of constantly chattering like hey we know you we know you're you're learning this but this is what we want you to do mm. this is this is really great that's a good practice but this is how it needs to be done by you you know it was like they were constantly giving me some feedback you know and just saying okay we really you're going to be over here and it was like they were prepping me prepping me prepping me and you know in my personal work you know in my life in my in my work work you know like in all areas, it was like they were constantly inviting me. It was like this invitation was constantly extended to bring all of that together, to to let them all flow into the same same place, mm -hmm. and to really open up and and share that I don't necessarily see it through the same lens as what I was taught. But it was like, oh, <laughs> like this light went on. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's okay. <laughs> And that's been really amazing. And I think part of that is the crystals. Part of that is travel for me, giving myself the opportunity, like creating these opportunities with uh, my husband has been so amazing. The two of us travel together a lot in the summer, long road trips where we go and just feel the land and experience different places and discovering what are the messages from from this particular place what wisdom does it have to offer and how is it uh, supporting what's unfolding in the world right now and recognizing where is it at in its cycle where is this location at is it ready to kind of go into its own process of restoration is it vibrant and alive and really nourishing a lot of people like what is feeling some of those places and recognizing the cycles it's and powerful yeah. to be able to integrate that. Well, and how great to have a partner to do that with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To have yeah. that be something that you both love and, and to get, get out on the road and, and do your thing like that. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about some of your uh, favorite sacred feminine rituals and, of course, some of your favorite crystal rituals because I know, like, as we were talking before we came together today, like right now you have this giant, gorgeous amethyst in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love for you to share. Let's pick today. What was, what was today's sacred feminine ritual? Yeah. The morning was really kind of about just being ready. Like how, what do I need to do to just show up and be fully ready to have this conversation? And this this giant amethyst crystal, <laughs> which I think it's probably six inches long and at its widest place is probably a good three plus inches wide. I mean, it's big. Yeah. <laughs> that one was just like, hey, hey, I want to I wanna play with you guys today. I want to come and chat and be a part of this conversation. <laughs> You know, really, uh, there's, there's kind of like a, a routine, like, you know, before I, I sit down, you know, making sure my desk is clear and that the, the crystals that on my altar, it's like I check in with the ones on my altar. Are you guys in alignment with this or not? And if they're not, then I will make some changes. I always keep a, um, an Oracle card on my desk as well. So I check in with that, like, hey, does this one want to align? And it's funny because it's, uh, it's from the Sacred Rebels deck. So you're probably familiar with this one. Yeah, um, one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. It's number 42. The word wants to be written. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about we insert the word spoken for today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I have, uh, this is, you know, this is kind of the, the 
process that I go through, like the ritual sequence that I go through before I sit down to record videos and stuff like that as well. But I also have a, a personalized scent that a friend made for me and that I spritz on like before I sit down and it just, the energy of it, it's just like, boom, I feel like I, I just line up and my, you know, every part of me is ready. I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk more about your work and how your work with crystals and your shamanic practice and all of what you bring forward supports the feminine experience. Mm, beautiful. I think one of the the beautiful things about shamanism is this deep relationship that it invites. And when I say relationship, I am speaking to many aspects of relationship from self to others, to nature, to life itself, to our space, our homes. It, it asks the question, what is your what how is your relationship and offers an invitation to come into alignment in in ways that are that we sometimes don't anticipate and are really beautiful and life changing and simple a lot of that comes through first getting to know ourselves and shamanic practice you know often we think about the big healing sessions and and those are really really beautiful and amazing but there are so many ways that we can also integrate practice into daily life and ritual is one of those ways i just spoke about my setup here right before sure. just preparing for this morning you know what if we were to have that level of consciousness and presence when we begin our day as we're brushing our teeth, what if we are actually present to the brushing our teeth rather than thinking about the next 10 things coming forward? What if while we're eating breakfast, we are allowing ourselves to be fully present within that and, and really recognizing the, the gift of the food that we're, we're able to receive? knowing where that came from, knowing you know what its energy is for us and how it is energizing our lives. I think there's so many places and opportunities for us to just get to know and create relationship that we miss. Like uh, often when we talk about like sacred sites and stuff like that, I'm kind of jumping a little bit here, but um, I've got something that's coming forward. So I'm going to touch on it. When we talk about sacred sites and we know, we recognize the importance of visiting them. Um, you know, like Sedona or the, like the, the pyramids or Machu Picchu, you know, we think of some of those really great, amazing places. But very often we're missing the relationship that's available in our backyard, in our neighborhood with the animals and the plants and the trees and, and what's unfolding within that space. You know, for example, there's there was a storm that went through. This is what's coming forward. Is the storm? The storm came through last spring, and I went out for my walk. And you know, as everyone probably has, we have a routine, right? And so I have my routine. And as I was about to pass a particular street, I heard, "Nope, you need to take a right." And I was like, "No, I just want to keep going. I want to go a little further." And they're like, "No, no, no. You can zigzag, but you have to go right." And I was like, "Okay." So I took a right, kind of just little mental conversation or right. spirit guidance. <laughs> Uh, take my rights, and I'm walking down the street, and I come upon this. Um, I live in a neighborhood called Ma- Maple Arches, and we have very old growth maple trees lining our streets. And slowly, they're coming to the end of their life. And one had fallen in the storm the night before, and I wouldn't have known that, you know. And this is almost directly behind my house. Um, I wouldn't have known though, otherwise, you know, because I would have kept going (laughs) in my normal route. When I approached this tree, I could just feel the emotion of the tree. I could feel the, hey, can you just send me on invitation? Can you just offer your love and a blessing? And so I paused and I stood with the tree and I was there, you know, maybe five, 10 minutes. I gave it some love. We just we kind of hugged each other. I thanked mm-hmm. it for, for holding the space of the, the street, let it know that it would be missed and just tuned into the spirit of the tree and invited it to, to move forward. And as I wrapped up 
wouldn't you know, the city pulled up to cut it down. Oh my goodness. The timing could not have been better. I mean, it was like literally if I had not said yes, it would have, and you know, the tree has its own journey, you know, but, but it was an opportunity for me to really honor the experience of what's happening in my local land. What is my relationship with it? And know that this, this place has meaning, you know, it's not, it's not Machu Picchu. It's not, it's not the pyramids, but it is a very, very sacred and connected space. I feel like where we live, the earth is asking us to wake it up or awaken to it. Maybe that's a more accurate phrase to, to create this relationship of acknowledging the life that's here and the cycles of it. And, and when we start to do that, we get to recognize how we ourselves have our own cycles. We have our own rhythms and, and how things are unfolding in our lives. It just is a whole new level of presence that emerges as oh, yeah. we presence and reverence. Mm-hmm. And if I was listening to your story about the tree um, here in the village of Sutton's Bay, there was this beautiful maple tree for the whole time I've lived here. And somebody had put a giant crystal, like bigger than your head in this tree Uh Uh, and for healing or for whatever reason, I don't know. I never Mm -hmm. talked to the person that actually put it there, but on my walks, uh, I would stop at that tree, put one hand on the crystal, one hand on the tree. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I might have had an offering with me or, but I had a relationship with this tree and this crystal. One day we were driving to the beach and I saw one of those tree, you know, one of those bucket trucks. And I noticed that, oh my God, is the tree gone? Oh, wow. My husband stopped and drove because it was in in an alleyway. Yeah. Over there. And there she was in pieces all Mm. over. I started bawling. I mean, I was just like so incredibly sad. And that I didn't get to say goodbye, that she was gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it, I mean, it really, Lori, it, it really hit me in a way that I yeah. would never have expected that it could. And so needless to say that it was really, really sad. And on a walk a couple of days later, I had the uh, opportunity to talk to the woman who lived at the house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was just like, oh, I was so, so sad to see that happen. And she, when she just told me, she's like, well, come here and you know, take a look. And she was showing me the root system and how it was going under this carriage house and how it was bringing up the flooring. And like, she really wanted me to understand that it was either getting rid of this entire structure in this carriage house or having to remove the tree. Wow. And how tough it was for her to make that call. Yeah, and that she had saved that this giant slice of the tree that had the crystal in it, and put it in her garden to honor. Oh. And I was just like, <laughs> was so beautiful. I was so grateful, you mm-hmm. know. Again, because for that uh, birth and death and honoring, as soon as that happened, and I could kind of connect those dots, I could just be like, okay, yeah, and also realize that you know the attachment that I had, and she offered me a piece of of the tree to, to take with me, mm. which I still have mm-hmm. and which I think I'm ready to release this, this year and in, in a fire, but I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't ready yeah. last year. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, not that wow. this whole conversation about the, these, trees, yeah. but, I think, <laughs> no, but I think, you know, I think it's beautiful and, you know, look at the opportunity at cave for just connecting even with your neighbor. So beautiful. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. a gift that tree gave, gave to Oh my gosh. And and who knows how many other people like me would walk by and touch that. And I mean, I know I wasn't mm-hmm. the only one. There's just yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this gorgeous, gorgeous healing tree. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think that, that uh, all of what we've been talking about really does the, the ritual and the sweetness and paying attention, the awareness, all of this supports the feminine experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it absolutely. It really, really does. It allows us to nurture ourselves and, and others and to really be mindful of our cycles and and to know when when we need to listen to those nudges to turn right and when yes. we need 
to be still or whatever it is that, that we need to just allow ourselves to listen and to give ourselves permission and to trust that we're, we're on the right path. Exactly. Exactly. What yeah. comes up for you when you hear me say that the time has come for women to reclaim their voices and speak their truth? Hmm. <laughs> so um, I think when I was uh, reading through this, I was like, oh, I just get this big, a oh, ho, like a big yes. I feel like the time is here and I feel like we are witnessing women doing this so, so often and, it, and more and more and more. It's like the, there's this wave that is just roaring in and it's becoming there's so many, like it just, it's time. It's just, it's just time. And there's a momentum. If there's my, my feeling is that as, as women are saying, stepping up, saying yes, giving themselves permission, doing the personal work that they need to do to rise into expressing their voice in whatever way that wants to come out, come forward in the world and be shared in the world. And when I say in their world, I mean, that's as simple as within their families and their, with their loved ones and um, allowing that to extend out from there in whatever way that wants to be. I think, um, you know, we kind of come back again to that permission word and, um, and really, you know, allowing ourselves uh, the permission, like if we're feeling that readiness, if, if there's some part of us that goes, yes, it's my time and I have no idea where to start it, to really, I mean, there's so many amazing women, you yourself, Shan, with w- the work that you're doing with supporting women to really find their voice and share it with the world. I think back to when I started my very first podcast <laughs> and you and I worked on that and you, you were such a key part in supporting me to feel ready and safe. And it was, oh gosh. So I guess, you know, allowing ourselves to have support with that is mm-hmm. really a big piece. Like this isn't something we need to do alone. This is, this piece is something that it's happening with so much momentum because people are, women are saying yes, and they're allowing themselves to be supported in the process. So it's really beautiful. Well said. I agree. And the wave was a perfect, perfect metaphor. It it really feels that way. And it's, and again, another synchronicity, I have the, the great wave on a silk scarf. It's a giant scarf that I had framed a long time ago with a beautiful bamboo frame. And there's something about that piece of art that, uh, that I've always loved. And there's so much power in it and there's so much beauty in it. And yet, and you, and you see these (laughs) fishermen or whomever, (laughs) tiny little boat moving through that wave, but they're, they're there. They're riding the wave. They're riding the wave. And that yeah. is uh, part of what we can do when we support each other is, is step up, ride the wave, be there, know you're supported. And if you don't feel like you're supported, realize that you can be. There are more and more and more of us as each day goes by that are open to listening, to holding space for mm-hmm. storytelling. And the beautiful piece of the realization that you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. I think that you're that, really not alone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's so important. And, you know, it's it's like it's like the big wave, right? It, it's this it there's that energy, that dynamic energy. It there's a that feels scary. Like there, there's a it can trigger so many fears and so many emotions. And at the same time, you're still held by the wave. Yeah. It's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> let's, let's segue over to talk about your precious love, inspiration, and excitement for the Crystal Shaman School. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like this is uh, a dream that is, oh gosh, <laughs> so many layers. <laughs> um, I'm super excited to to really be 
to have that open to be supporting uh, individuals and really finding their unique, like saying yes to their unique shamanic path. And also, you know, really creating that foundation of relationship with life, with self, and finding practices that really support that naturalness in life. When did the doors open for Crystal Shaman School? And you know, give me just yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, so we have um, our initiation program. Um, we currently have a group and we're opening doors for a second group. The, actually, the doors are for enrollment are open and the program begins on May 3rd, Friday, May 3rd. Okay. Uh, and it runs for a year. It's a 12 month initiation program. We go through the entire medicine wheel, we create a medicine bundle with stones that um, represent different places that we create relationship with and that support us in our healing work. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I suspect then your, your free seven day crystal immersion journey probably ties into like would give people a good taste of yeah, you know, um, it's interesting because I, I, I love this seven-day journey. It goes everywhere from opening with an intention to uh, connecting with it and receiving messages to doing a shamanic journey, which is it's just a, a nice, easy seven-day practice that it, it just takes you through one day to the next. And it'll support you in like really kind of just what is what does my stone have to say? What is uh, why did I pick this one? So often we pick up a stone and we go, huh? Why did I pick up this one? What does it want? Why is it sitting on my desk? Suddenly I can't put this one down. What's going on? This is the only one I wear. <laughs> <laughs> Our whole conversation before we started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so often we have those questions, and um, and it's kind of like, well, I, we can go and look in a book, and a book will give us really great information. But it's also through the lens of another individual. Yeah. And what if we are able to adjust our lens so subtly to be able to connect with it in a way that it allows us to understand why, why this particular stone came in versus the general like group of amethyst, they have to say. So sure. it, it's really interesting. Yeah, oh, it's a, I think it's a great place to start. And that the seven-day crystal immersion journey is available at laurieaandrus.com, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Forward slash uh, crystal challenge. So yeah. laurieaandrus.com forward slash crystal challenge. Okay. We'll make sure we have a, a link to that in our show notes as well. Yes. Before <laughs> we wrap our conversation today, Lori, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Oh, you know, I, the, the piece that's coming forward is that it is just time to give your soul permission whatever it's been asking for, um, whatever, you know, twist or turn it's inviting you to take in your life or peace that it's inviting you to explore within, give yourself permission. It, this truly is a time for women to really rise in, in their knowing of self and in their power and, and really reclaim their voice. So thank you for this opportunity. To oh, be you're welcome. Thank you so much for for coming on board and having this conversation. It's always a pleasure to connect with you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for creating this podcast. Oh, it's fantastic. That was Lori Andrus, founder of the Crystal Shaman School and the Crystal Shaman Life podcast. Learn more about Lori and get her free crystal immersion journey at laurieaandrus.com. You can also get more information about the Crystal Shaman School at crystalshamanschool.com. Thanks for listening to This Sacred Life and the Divine Feminine Spotlight. Visit transformationgoddess.com to claim our album of guided relaxations for women who do too much. And while you're there, check out our latest articles, book reviews, and resources for your goddess journey.